بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم الصادق الوعد الأمين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت الحليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لأمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وقال تعالى في المقام آخر والأرض مددناها وألقينا فيها رواسية وأنبتنا فيها من كل شيء موزون صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا may Allah سبحانه وتعالى you know really grant uh, خير to all of us and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى open up the doors of understanding and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, really grant us the best in this life and in the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, mashallah, as you know, it's always a fantastic opportunity for all of us to connect on a more deeny level, right? So the whole point of this whole exercise of mashallah speaking, we discuss different topics. We discuss topics about personal development. We, ask, we discuss topics about professional development, about social interactions last month. We discuss so many different things about the power of the mind and the mental tools that one can develop in order to grasp the understanding. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ulul al-bab. Who are these people that are ulul al-bab? And in another place of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ Who are these people, the rasikh person in their ilm, the rasikh person in their knowledge, وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ so to develop that, we needed to develop our mental skills. We spoke about memory. We spoke about cognition. We spoke about, you know, different, different tools that we can have in our mental toolbox in order to understand and, you know, really grasp the concepts that are around us. We have a fantastic history that, subhanAllah, we have great inventors. A thousand years before, before the bringing of electricity, they didn't need electricity to develop a GPS device. Okay? They didn't need data or satellites. We have Fatima al-Asralabi rahimahallah who made the astrolabe. Who without any batteries and without electricity could tell you where you were in the world and when you were. Could tell you the time and place and how to find your way. A GPS device, mechanical in nature. You had to learn of course how to use it. There's no doubt about that. Ibn al-Haytham, a thousand years ago make something that is called the camera obscura which is the beginning of the camera and he was able to capture pictures and images imagine hundreds of years ago so alhamdulillah you know islam mashallah has this beautiful nature to it and mashallah in our tradition we have this not negating that this doesn't exist in any other tradition but just the prominence of this subhanallah in our tradition this is just the amazing thing about it so let's get started inshallah ta'ala with this beautiful topic it's going to be a little bit of a mouthful inshallah we're going to try and summarize it here and there the different main main points but inshallah ta'ala we will discuss that so the ayah a karima that i have recited upon you from surah hijab and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the 19th ayah of this beautiful surah and in the lovely quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal arda madadnaha وَأَلْقَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَا وَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْزُونَ Okay, this is a deep topic guys. We need to get into this over a series. There needs to be a series on this topic. We discussed history. Wallahi, you have no idea how difficult it is to go through this field and not wanting to go in depth. But I will say this, that inshallah, keep an eye out for this, for this thing in the future. Before starting with this topic though, I want to mention something very important. Science is still catching up with the Qur'an. And it's going to be like that because mashallah, the Quran is such a book that it is meant to be relevant until the day of death. For all time, it is relevant. So, science is still catching up with it. So, it's not that the Quran is a science book. No. It's not this science text only. It is an encompassing book. And mashallah, the physical attributes of the world around us are explained as well. The oceans. Now you can get into different topics if you want. You can get into different aspects and perspectives on this. 
people have gone and calculated how many times the word ard is mentioned and how many times the word ma or, 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 or bahar is mentioned or how many times you know and so people have calculated they've gone into these things and they've they've went and you know they've measured this and they've come back with things that subhanallah there's some correlation between you know the percentage of how much land is mentioned and water is mentioned in the quran with the water and percentage of the earth these different things we i don't want to get into that i've never done research on that I, I i haven't done those type of calculations but that's not something i'm going to get into what i will mention is inshallah some things that really stand out you know um at least from the physical aspect that you and me can relate to in the modern world so in this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and at the earth that we have spread it out so think about this geologists and a, a lot of the scientists will tell you that most of the of the continents were, were stuck together and there's different names for this continent right zealandia and, and and even bigger than that there was other continents that were bigger than that and these continents there were mega continents where the earth all the land was put together and that explains how people were able to travel you know and there's a whole story behind that how they got there and specifics about that but allah subhanahu wa says well arda madadnaha we have spread it out subhanallah subhanallah until now continents are moving until now continents are moving and they move ever so closely to each other or ever so closely away from each other depending on how you look at it so they were all together at one time and they are still moving islands and parts of the earth and land masses so this is an amazing thing subhanallah and today geologists and and, and, and gemologists and all those people who look at the minerals in the earth they will tell you when they want to find out what's in different countries in terms of minerals they're going to look at that old picture of the continent it's not just the world how it is today you got to look about how the world was those days so subhanallah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have put place firm mountains and caused everything to grow therein in perfect balance mashallah so the earth has an ability to grow things mashallah and as we see mashallah we see forests on one side of the world rainforests and semi-tropical and tropical mashallah and different habitats even the desert you and me would think that the desert is not a living thing it's a living thing there are creatures that survive in that habitat even subhanallah if you go down to the depths of the ocean and again, one of the ayats that we're going to be discussing today is about the depths of the ocean, subhanAllah. Allah SWT says that we have put mountains there to make them firm. And subhanAllah, what do we discover today? That the mountain, that, the land mass that we're seeing in front of us, which is the mountain, it's only really a portion of the real mountain. And the mountain actually goes much more deeper and has, goes really deep into the earth and plays mashallah a stability role and anytime there's something wrong on the mountain as those people who live in in, in areas where it's you know close to you know uh, volcanoes or it's on the ring of fire or whatever when something goes wrong on the mountain then everyone goes the mountains are there for a reason they're there to keep you balanced right <laughs> That we have put them there to what in another place in the Quran and Tamida Bikum. That is to keep you firm, mashaAllah. And in another ayah of the Quran of, 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 of another surah, which we're gonna get to now is the second point, is Surah Nur. Okay, let's go to the oceans. We've been discussing the land for a while. Let's go to the oceans, inshaAllah ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. In regards to the oceans and subhanallah the, the amazing thing is that these are ayats that were revealed to this, this world almost a thousand four hundred years ago almost a thousand four hundred years ago so let's read this ayah mashallah which is a beautiful ayah to give us an understanding of what, how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to us the different happenings of the the sky and the and the and the and the, and the ocean 
So in regards to waves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, that in ayah number 40, in Surah Nur, and Surah Nur is in the 18th juz, and the 18th parah, and it is the 24th surah of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أو كذلمات في بحر لجي يغشاه موج من فوقه موج من فوقه سحاب ذلمات بعدها فوق بعد إذا أخرج يده لم يكد يراها ومن لم يجعل الله له نورا فما له من نور Look at that subhanahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, kadulumatin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing, you know, how certain things are like, like for example, deeds, and the tafsir goes into this, but like the darkness, fi bahrin in a deep sea, yagshahu mawjun, that there is waves, min fawqihi mawjun, min fawqihi sahab. A lot of us will be thinking, hold on, what's going on over here? So those ones that are talking about the waves that are coming on top of each other, could be that. But let me, let me explain it to you. Allah SWT said, Sahab. Min fawqihi mawjun. Fawqihi mawjun. Min fawqihi sahab. Hold on, what? Yakshahu mawjun. Min fawqihi mawjun. Min fawqihi. Allah SWT said, fawq. Fawqihi sahab. Dhulumatun ba'duha fawqa ba'd. Again, Allah SWT says, darkness. From darkness. It's so dark in there in places of the oceans that what? Even if you take out your hand, can't see it. And the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given nur light to, then there is no light. So I'm just going to give you some examples. And I'm going to let you connect the dots. That we're talking about Darkness, levels of darkness. The one that doesn't have light. So what does this mean? You can take it in the spiritual context. Yes, you can definitely take it in the spiritual context. And there's many different types of tafasir that you can take from this. Explanations and commentaries of the Quran. Of course, they have to be done in a, in a, in a, in a, in a manner that is, you know, in line with the scholarly tradition of how to, take the you know, knowledge but I'm going to tell you this that in the ocean there are currents repeat that again in the ocean there are currents so what are these currents these currents that are in the ocean subhanallah they are like waves down under so you have a list of waves that are in the ocean itself. And sometimes, did you know you even get waterfalls and rivers in the oceans? The marine geologists and the marine biologists and those people, mashallah, who are experts in the Bahar, they will tell us that as well. That you get currents and rivers and even temperature changes inside the ocean. We talk about river inside the ocean, it's all water. No, it's not all water, brothers and sisters. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this in this ayah. So what do we find? We find that there are waves. How long did it take mankind to find this? This is, this is knowledge that only after you know, imaging technologies came out and sonar technologies came out that we're able to define these things down in the depths of the ocean. You know, we're very good, mashallah. We've, you know, we've got SpaceX, we've got all of these. We've got NASA and SpaceX. SpaceX is like the NASA of the 60s now. All the latest stuff is happening there. And then, you know, yeah, we've discovered, so we've gone all the way to the moon. Okay, we've done all of these things. When it comes to the, our own planet, we haven't really been more than a couple of kilometers in the crust of the earth. And in the sea, we're still really discovering parts of the sea. We know the imaging of it, but we're still really discovering aspects of it. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, at the end of this ayah, that the one that he has not given light to, then there is no life for them. There are creatures at the bottom of the ocean that what? That move without light. It's so dark that there, you, it, if you take out your hand, you can't see it.
Wow. That's how dark it is. So subhanAllah, it is, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, this is an ayah. How many ayahs do you need? How many signs do you need to show you the truth and to show you the, you know, the power and the qudr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Aw kadulumatin fi bahin lujiyin yagshahu mawjun So there are waves. Min fawqihi mawjun Min fawqihi sahab So waves and the waves that you and me see, we think this is the only waves. No, there's other waves and there's other currents under the ocean. And then on top of that, the, the clouds. So you can tell it's talking about levels. If you were to look at it in a 2D sense, this is how it is. The clouds, the waves, and even if you to draw it, go draw it. You, in a 2D sense, you'll look at it like that. Clouds, the waves, bottom of that wave. And subhanAllah, sometimes, sometimes half a kilometer, sometimes a kilometer down, it, depending on how deep, which part of the ocean is, how deep the ocean goes. And as we know, the deep recesses of the ocean are very deep. Brothers and sisters, this is a sign for us, my younger brothers and sisters, and also everyone else that is also listening here too, our regular guests. Let us know and understand this and read this, that subhanAllah, there is a lot of khair there from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes it takes us time to really realize this thing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهُ يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالطَّيْرُ صَافَاتِ كُلٌّ قَدْ عَلِمَ صَلَاتَهُ وَتَسْبِيحَ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِمَا يَفْعَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the animals and the creatures, they have their own languages. And subhanAllah, now we find people discovering techniques of, of their own ways and how they do things. The creatures. And to translate that ayah for you, that do you not see that Allah is glorified by all that is in the heavens and the earth? Yani respect those things that are in the heavens and the earth. Even the birds as they saw, each, each of these in kullun qad alima salatahu wa tasbiha. Each of these things, they know the manner of their prayer and their glorification. Wallahu alimu bima yaf'alun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is knowing what they're doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they do. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, brothers and sisters, this is something that all of us can, can wake up to. So in the calculations, let's go to another field now. Let's go to, so we've discussed a little bit about the land, discussed a bit about the sea. Let's now discuss about quantum physics and the universe, astrophysics. There was a time when, you know, Einstein was making between his theories of general relativity and special relativity, Einstein could not account for this force, just to, sum, just to summarize it for you, and our brothers and sisters who are experts in, and, and, and those the experts in physics, we don't intend to tell you what your field is, we're just learning from you and your field, that subhanAllah there is this, he put this lambda, lambda, he found that there was something that was pushing the, the, the universe, there was this power, there was this force that, that was there. And later on, when they, dis, when they invented the Hubble Space Telescope, when they invented the Hubble Space Telescope, they found that the pictures of the universe at one time was different to the pictures of the universe at another time. The galaxies, the pictures of them, they were moving and they were expanding. That's the word I want to use. They were expanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about the heavens and the earth, about the heavens and the skies, that we are making it wider. We are expanding it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah uh, Rahman, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Like how many of the, you know, the, the ni'mas, the blessings of your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are you going to deny? Now, isn't it enough? Can't we just leave it at that? How many of them are we going to deny? 
the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really showed us, you know, from his qudra and from his power. Let's stick to this concept of the astrophysics and the heavens. MashaAllah, there's many, there's many ayat in regards to this. There's many, many ayat in regards to this. But inshallah ta'ala, I just want to focus on this thing because there is this concept of nebulas, right? A nebula and different bodies within the, within the earth, within the, within the heavens and the universe. So I want to just show you one ayah and this ayah is in Surah Rahman, MashaAllah and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in this ayah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that فَإِذَا انْشَقَّتِ السَّمْعَ أَعُوذُ بِبَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ فَإِذًا شَقَّتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that what? That when the heavens will split apart and become like rose red, like burning oil, like burnt oil. Rose red, subhanallah. فَإِذًا شَقَّتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانِ Like a flower and subhanallah, how many of these pictures go with? Just type nebula, nebulas. And go and see them, subhanAllah, when you look at this nebula, you're going to think, subhanAllah, it's like a red rose, subhanAllah. Wardatan kaddihan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it being like a rose. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters. This is just, this is a drop in the ocean. You can't cover this in 20 minutes. This needs a series. We need to do a, we need to do a series of a couple of hours discussing this, subhanAllah. So this is subhanAllah, this is the barakah and the khayr. But this is only when, when, brothers and sisters, when a person becomes able to code, decode and understand the different, you know, words and the different concepts that are used, you know, uh, in the Quran and the beauty, mashaAllah, to really see the beauty of this, uh, of the Quran and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put all of these beautiful things inside of it. Now let's go to the field of, bio, uh, of the human biology. You know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Dhariyat, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْسِرُونَ Do you not see in yourselves? Yani in yourselves there is also in us, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ And it was unheard of at the time. There wasn't autopsies. There wasn't, you know, uh, microscopes going inside and looking inside blood. And looking inside the human cells. There wasn't any of that, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِيَ عَنْ فُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا And in yourself do you not see? Because in the human body itself, there is enough for a person to realize and find their Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With all due respect, everyone is allowed to come to the conclusions that they want to, theoretically speaking, that's fine. Theoretically, yes, you can come to your conclusions. There is a freedom of thought and freedom of speech and understanding. But what I'm saying is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبُصِرُونَ Do you not see in yourselves? SubhanAllah. Now let's go to Surah Mu'minun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, SubhanAllah, it's a beautiful explanation of embryology. So SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in in, in in a series of ayah, ayah number 12, 13, and 14. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we created humankind from extracts of clay. Okay? And we can go into this and go into it and go into it, mashaAllah. There is a lot of stories of probiotics. There's a lot of stories of bacteria and how the bacteria of the clay are present in the human body. And now there's a huge project called the Human Microbiome Project. MashaAllah, after the human microbiome, I want them to do the earth biome project, MashaAllah. That's going to be even more difficult, trying to find the different, you know, bacteria species in the world. But SubhanAllah, one of these things is, Allah SWT created us from clay, and then, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مكين. Then Allah SWT says, we have made you from a drop of sperm in a secure place, SubhanAllah. Think about it. 
just going to leave the conclusion to you, brothers and sisters. Then we develop the nutfa, this drop of, 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 of sperm alaqa into a into an alaq, a clot, right? Of blood, yeah. Then we made that clot into something that was fleshy. Then that flesh, it began to have bones. And then we put on top of the bones flesh. And then we brought into being a new creation. Look at that. فتبارك الله أحسن الخالقين. والله to talk embryology a thousand four hundred years ago to find this in the Quran. Allahu Akbar. جزاك الله خيرا. May Allah subhanahu wa taala put blessings in this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa taala put blessings in this world. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us all خير and رحمة.